Section 7 of Hans Christian Andersen Fairy Tales and Short Stories, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Christine G. Hans Christian Andersen Fairy Tales and Short Stories, Volume 3, 1848 to 1853. Translated by H. P. Paul. The Phoenix Bird. In the garden of paradise, beneath the tree of knowledge, bloomed a rose bush. Here, in the first rose, a bird was born. His flight was like the flashing of light, his plumage was beauteous, and his song ravishing. But when Eve plucked the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when she and Adam were driven from paradise, there fell from the flaming sword of the cherub a spark into the nest of the bird, which blazed up forthwith. The bird perished in the flames, but from the red egg in the nest there fluttered aloft a new one, the one solitary phoenix bird. The fable tells that he dwells in Arabia, and that every hundred years he burns himself to death in his nest. But each time a new phoenix, the only one in the world, rises up from the red egg. The bird flutters round us, swift as a light, beauteous in colour, charming in song. When the mother sits by her infant's cradle, he stands on the pillow, and, with his wings, forms a glory around the infant's head. He flies through the chamber of content, and brings sunshine into it, and the violets on the humble table smell doubly sweet. But the phoenix is not the bird of Arabia alone. He wings his way in the glimmer of the northern lights over the plains of Lapland, and hops among the yellow flowers in the short Greenland summer. Beneath the copper mountains of Fabloon and England's coal mines, he flies, in the shape of a dusty moth, over the hymn-book that rests on the knees of the pious miner. On a lotus leaf he floats down the sacred waters of the Ganges, and the eye of the Hindu maid gleams bright when she beholds him. The phoenix bird, dost thou not know him? The bird of paradise, the holy swan of song. On the car of Thespis he sat in a guise of a chattering raven, and flapped his black wings, smeared with a lease of wine. Of the sounding harp of Iceland swept the swan's red beak. On Shakespeare's shoulder he sat in a guise of Odin's raven, and whispered in the poet's ear, Immortality! And at the minstrel's feast he fluttered through the halls of the Vartbog. The phoenix bird, dost thou not know him? He sang to thee the Marseillaise, and thou kissedst the pen that fell from his wing. He came in the radiance of paradise, and perchance thou didst turn away from him towards the sparrow who sat with tinsel on his wings. The bird of paradise, renewed each century, born in flame, ending in flame. Thy picture, in a golden frame, hangs in the halls of the rich, but thou thyself often flies around, lonely and disregarded, a myth, the phoenix of Arabia. In paradise, when thou wert born in the first rose, beneath the tree of knowledge, thou receivedst a kiss, and thy right name was given thee. Thy name, Poetry. End of the Phoenix Bird. Recording by Christine G. in Oslo, Norway, the twenty fifth of August, two thousand and twelve.